All right, what is up, guys? Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another American Reacts. And we've been on fire lately, man, with a lot of reactions, but especially those based in Australia. I've loved learning about the AFL, motorsports in Australia, and, and much more. But there is a lot more to come, but I figured I better get versed in just the whole country first before I start really continuing learning in depth about a lot of the sports and, and culture, right? Might as well get a general overlook of the country. So we're watching Geography Now, Australia, and, and this is just a you know quick run through. I know they can't cover everything, but this will be a good introduction to Australia. So let's uh, waste no more time. Let's go ahead and watch this together. All right, everybody, let's just all get it off of our chests. Koalas and kangaroos, boomerangs, did you reduce? Sydney, Melbourne, Uluru, crocodiles, cockadoos, everything that will kill you. <laughs> Shrimp on Barbies, that's not true. That Vegemite stuff that tastes like poo. Coral reefs and platypuses. Pla platypus platypi. What's the plural of platypus? platypus All right, now let's wow. actually learn about the freaking country. Today's going to be Australia. You know the drill. Let's dissect the flag. All right. There it is. The Australian flag has a blue field with a Union Jack on the upper hoist corner to represent that it was a former colony and a current Commonwealth of the United Kingdom, with a large right. star under it representing the Commonwealth, and the five stars on the right, the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Crucis, to the right representing the Southern Cross constellation. All right. Awesome. So that was fun. Now let's discuss about the borders. Now, obviously, as an island nation, or rather large one, but still an island, Australia doesn't have any borders with any other nations. But right. That doesn't mean that Australia doesn't have some rather... Australia is unique is in that it's the only country that's also a continent. Am I correct? Tell me if I'm wrong down below. It's so big, it's a continent, but it's also a country. Tree. And an island. The country divides itself up in a rather intriguing way. Like the US, Australia has states, not provinces. There is a difference. Six of them, yeah. and each one kind of has their own little flair and quirks, like cool. Tasmania, known for being crazy. Where things get a little <laughs> interesting, though, are the territories. Australia has three domestic internal territories and six overseas territories. Technically seven if you include the Australian Antarctic Territory, Whoa. even though the Antarctic Treaty kind of bans anybody from claiming Antarctic soil as their own, which uh. we will find out in future episodes that a lot of countries do a wonderful job at ignoring. The three internal territories are Northern Territory, Capital Territory, which is basically just the capital city of Canberra and some extra space around it, and the confusing little tyke Jervis Bay Territory. Jervis Bay wow. was bought and developed to give the inland capital Canberra access to the sea, and eventually Jervis Bay split from the capital. However, it's still uh, counted as part of the capital in elections. It's a little confusing, even though it really doesn't have much hmm. going for it, except for a small Navy base and beaches that it kind of took from other neighboring towns. Oh, the most man. dramatic border area though would have to be the middle of australia for years this slab of land didn't exactly quite know how to distinguish itself and has gone through four transitions in the past century first it was okay. all south australia which didn't quite make sense because parts of it touched the northern parts of australia right. so it split into two one state and one territory then for four years it became south australia and two territories the new one being called central australian territory then finally it changed its mind and went back to being northern territory central australia is kind of like your girlfriend at a restaurant what do you you want <laughs> what do you want it's not that simple finally we reach <laughs> so the true. overseas territories although australia has over 8,000 islands under its sovereignty wow. six of these islands operate as distinct territories some of which sustain themselves with permanent populations they are ashmore and cartier the cocos or keelings islands coral sea islands the herd and mcdonald islands wow. and the popular holiday spot norfolk island and the now this is one of the most interesting things learning about any country is all the islands involved because you know, on the map, even on Google Earth, exploring around, unless you're hella zoomed in, you just don't see a lot of these islands. So, wow, 8,000 islands around there that they have, uh, that's very interesting, right? And it's so cool and kind of mind-blowing to think that there's all these little islands that, you know, are just there or that people might even live on. And it's just like in the middle of nowhere, truly, right? You're in the middle of the ocean. It's so bizarre because we most of us live on big land masses. The pleasant Christmas island that gets attacked by huge coconut crabs every year. Now, I've heard of Christmas island. I don't know why or I don't know where, but that's cool. Christmas island. And oh, those are those are freaky looking. Ooh, look at their different colors. See, that one's red. That one's blue. 
Yikes. Finally, Australia is home to arguably the most micronations in the world. Places like the Principality of Y, Rainbow Creek, the Empire of Atlantium, and more. These Interesting. These nations were developed by either small groups of people or a single person because they were doing things like protesting taxes and wanted to claim autonomy, or wow. they were just kind of bored and decided to amuse themselves. But still, hey. Nice. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the landscape, shall we? Big geography guy. I love physical geography. I'm excited to learn about this because I'm pretty sure Australia's got some amazing scenic geography. So Okay, not all of Australia is a desert, okay? Only about 35%. Okay, so besides Antarctica, I like Australia deserts. is the driest continent on the planet, which explains wow. why, yes, 85% okay. of the population lives along the edges of the country within 50 kilometers of the coast. That's crazy. A lot of places, specifically I around. have heard that before, that like almost everyone lives on the coast. When you have that big of a landmass, but yet everyone's on the edge, it's pretty weird. Totally the opposite in the United States. You know, it's a big landmass as well, but people live on the coast and millions upon millions of people live in the center. So it's, it's a lot different. The coasts actually have very temperate and even tropical landscapes. By the north, you find tropical zones and wetlands and rainforests. Wow. On the far edges, on the east and west, you can find subtropical zones with lighter forests and plains. A little bit inland, close to the interior, you find grasslands and flat stretches of semi-arid terrain. Okay. In the southeast, by Sydney, you find temperate, cooler, arid land with semi-tropical yet slightly dry areas with an abundance of trees and plants. Then, of course, you have Tasmania, which is on a completely different level of huh. green. Then we reach the deep <laughs> interior where we hit the. Oh. Great oh, deserts yeah. like the Great Victoria and the Great Sandy Deserts. Wow. This area is famously known as the Outback. Oh, the Outback yeah. Outback is essentially the area of Australia with long open stretches of red and orange desert that lays out beyond the horizon nice. with few sparse populations of people that can be found anywhere. It has a dry, rocky, rugged terrain that everybody assumes is teeming with a variety of poisonous insects and reptiles. <laughs> and, well, I mean, it kind Holy of is, but smokes. still, there's more to it than just that. Oh, man. <laughs> Boy, you know, it's funny as an American... I feel like, at least from my general knowledge, that yeah, our you know bugs and and insects and arachnids are not quite on that level. And I mean, around where I am in the central U.S., you know, we have a lot of spiders and stuff, but they're very small, right? Wooded spiders. You know, we do a brown recluse, but it, it it's not. I don't know. It's not as scary. I mean, I you know they're not anything like that. That I don't even know how I'd react. I'll be honest. You know. <laughs> I feel like some scary animals like that can make a man scream. Like, you know, I mean, come on. I don't know. If you're not used to them anyway, I mean, seeing something like that on your wall, you got to picture that. That'd be freaky. Oh, and don't forget, like, people in Australia watching this, please comment down below your experience with uh, animals and, I guess, you know, bugs, you know, spiders, things like that. Is it as bad as outsiders think? Like, are these things you see a lot or is it kind of overhyped? You don't see these things a lot, if ever. Are these things invading your homes? I would hope not. Tell me your, a, a little bit about your experience with some extreme animals and or, you know, bugs, if you can. Hillier, that strange lake that is mysteriously naturally pink for some strange reason. Wow. Like scientists. Now, if there's one thing that that's really bizarre, Australia, it would have to be its world renowned beaches and coasts. People flock from all over the world just to enjoy the beautiful pristine. Real quick, before we continue on, back to the Outback. The Outback is fascinating. Obviously, even as American, we know about the Outback. It's, it's all over media around the world. I would assume it's very famous. And someone made an awesome comment literally today on my channel um, from a different video. And they were talking about how the Outback, just think of it as Death Valley, which is an extreme, crazy place here in the United States in Eastern California. Uh, think of Death Valley, but all the way going across the country to like New Jersey. And that was a great analogy because that is the Outback. The Outback is huge, whereas Death Valley is very small, but it's intense. I mean, it's like 125 degrees Fahrenheit there regularly. And to think how small it is and how extreme it is and then think extreme on that level, basically, but, you know, way significantly bigger. Yeah, the Outback is nuts pristine atmosphere of a real authentic Australian beach. Just remember to put on your sunscreen though. Australians actually kind of have a joke <laughs> where they can tell who the ignorant tourists are. It's usually nice. the ones who think they'll be totally fine sitting out in the sun for more than 20 minutes. Skin cancer rates are actually exceptionally high in Australia and the population wow. has acknowledged the precautions that they need to take. Now yeah. we all know that Australia is home to some of the most unique and curiously distinct animal species in the world not yes. found anywhere else. However, Australia is also known as the home of many feral species. Australia has over 50 hmm. invasive species that 
that were brought over to the land from areas mostly in Europe, and over the course of nearly one and a half centuries have bred and spread like wildfire all <laughs> over the country. Animals like the European rabbit, red fox, water buffaloes, goats, pigs, wow. even camels, and worst of all, the famous cane toad. They I did hear about that in my Saudi Arabia videos that Australia actually exports camels to Saudi Arabia and, and countries surrounding that. So I thought that was pretty mind-blowing. I did not know that. Very interesting. They've all gone wild and have cost the Australian government billions of dollars in environmental damages and maintenance. Yeah, I don't Ooh. really know how to transition into the demographics from this part. So here's demographics. <laughs> Today, Australia has a population of about 23 million people. Now, to many outsiders, Australia is kind of known as the... Is that right? I mean, this video is five or six years old. I thought it... I thought Australia was like 30 or 40 million. So, tell me in the comments what the accurate number is. That seems a little low. I thought it was higher than that. ...place where the British sent their prisoners. First of all, that's rude. Second of all, that's only, like, kind of half true. Yes, during the early years of Australia's colonization <laughs> from the UK, droves of convicts were sent to penal colonies in Botany Bay, which is now in present-day Sydney. Over uh, 165,000 convicts, about 25,000 of which were women, were sent over the course of 80 right. years. Although the British weren't the first ones to discover Australia, it was actually the Dutch. As they came, they okay. named the land New Holland and the adjacent island next door, New Zealand, after the province of ah. Netherlands. However, as okay. we discovered, the Dutch were really good at discovering places, but kind of not so good at colonizing and maintaining those uh. places for themselves. <laughs> However, most of Australia's population came from natural colonization from British non-convict nationals. Some would argue right. that Australia was kind of like the UK's version of Operation Backup Plan in case of America goes crazy. After the American oh, Revolution, wow. the UK <laughs> tried to compensate for lost colonies by re-establishing new ones, and Australia was hot on the list. About 85% oh, okay. of the population is European. Asians make up the next largest minority, 12%, mostly coming from China and India, okay. and other Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam and the Philippines. And mm. by the way, yes, Australia does have black people, not many, but before the Federation began, uh -huh. Africans, mostly from sub-Saharan countries like South Africa, Mauritius, Zimbabwe, and Sudan, have historically resided in Australia. It wasn't okay. until the 60s when African assistance programs allowed many Africans to study and eventually move to Australia. And today, they make up about 1% of the population. One demographic of people that commonly gets over look though would have to be the native australians commonly known as the aborigines which yes. make up about three percent of the population which i have heard aborigines of those. are a very unique and distinct people group that come from hundreds of different tribes each with their own language and dialect wow. spread throughout the north south and central regions today aboriginal rights are a huge hot button topic in australian legislation and about 22 okay. percent of the land of northern australia is aboriginal owned in 2013 aboriginal groups actually banded together and decided to kind of make their own little state called the murawari republic independent from australia the Australian wow. government, though, doesn't really recognize this claim. It just kind of brushes it off with a meh, as long as you don't cause a civil war attitude. Well, as you can see, okay. a lot of people have come to live in Australia, but now let's see how Australia interacts with the rest of the world. So that was interesting. Yeah, I didn't know anything. I just have heard of the Aborigines, but I didn't know anything about them. Uh, it's interesting to see all these independent kind of places within Australia. Uh, that's something I never knew about. Australia a friend is, zone. let's just put it very simply, a very popular country. If this was high oh, school, yeah. Australia would be on the top of the social ladder, hands <laughs> down. Everybody knows something about Australia. I, I would agree. As an American, even before I was into kind of geography and, and world cultures, uh, even as a little kid, I just, I don't know why, I just knew about Australia. I think it's very relevant here in America. It's seen as an awesome country that's obviously friendly with America and a very popular vacation or tour spot because it's so fascinating. And it's also in our media, in our movies, you know, our social media. It's it's very connected to the U.S., uh, at least from my perspective. So I would argue that probably worldwide, a lot of people are fascinated with Australia. You know, it's a very famous country, if that makes sense. When it comes to friends, though, Australia not only goes for the cool kids, but also the strategic ones. Of course, Australia gets along with many of its Asian neighbor nations, specifically right. China and India, as large numbers of people from those nations live in Australia, and they do great business with them as well. Australia gets along pretty well with the islands of Oceania, except Fiji. In 2006, mm. Australia refused to back up a military coup that overthrew the government in Fiji, and since then, 
things have been a little weird between the two countries. Uh -huh. In terms of their best friends, though, of course, New Zealand would have to rank in the top level, and they yeah. are basically like siblings that share a very similar culture, language, and histories as former colonies. That's Whereas what the I've UK also understood. has a high priority on Australia's entourage, as they make up the largest demographic of people ethnically and as migrants in the country. But right. finally, we reach the USA. The USA and Australia kind of have a little crush on each other. Australia is always <laughs> there to back up the US in times when allies are necessary, and the US, well, I mean, we Americans, we just love Australians. Yeah. We love their accents. Yep. We love their culture. We love I their do. accents. We love their spunky Australian attitude, and we love their sexy, sexy accents. Almost. Yeah, because uh, before I started these reaction videos, I'm glad that I've been getting viewers and traction with these from Australia. It's awesome because I've always liked it. I've always known. I, I haven't known like details, so that's why I'm glad I'm learning more. But I've always known that they had like a cool car culture. I'm a car guy. I've known that they're, you know, big into similar things as us, but with their own flair. So they like beer. They like good food. They like having a good time, sports. Uh, these are very, you know, generic things I'm talking about. But yeah, it, it's a very easy transition, you know, learning about one, uh, you know, for an Australian learning about America or vice versa. Yeah, I think naturally it, it's no wonder that uh, people from either place like the other place. Any Australian that comes to the U.S. is immediately loved and welcome, even if yes. they are slightly sociopathic. One sentence <laughs> with that accent and we are smitten. We love you, Australia. Yeah, In their conclusion. accent is Australia my favorite, is for, for real. Everybody loves Australia. Stay tuned. Austria is coming up next. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, funny story, quick story. Uh, in high school, I had a fascination with accents, and I tried so hard to learn an Australian accent. I even watched back then. That, this was early YouTube, like 2009-ish. Um, I There were some videos on how to do an Australian accent. <laughs> no, I'm not going to just play it for you guys. Maybe, maybe someday if, if we keep growing and maybe I hit like a sub goal or something. Maybe I'll try talking Australian, but not right now. I'm embarrassed. I I found it very hard. Like it sounds so cool, but it it's actually hard to do, at least for me as an American. So, but yeah, I, I remember I wanted to learn Australian accent so bad. <laughs> try and use it on a girl here or something, you know? So anyway, we'll take a quick look at the comments. I'll throw a thumbs up on there. We in Australia don't have an accent. It's other countries that do. Nice. Also, Canberra is pronounced Canberra, okay, I which I have heard Canberra. So yeah, Canberra and Melbourne is said as Melbourne. So the American in me would have said Melbourne at first, but it is Melbourne. So Melbourne and Canberra. There we go. All right, I'm already I'm already getting better. <laughs> Mate, this cracked me up. I'm an I'm an Aussie, and the part about the accents was hilarious. Awesome. Someone said they love Australia and they love Vegemite. There you go. That's on my bucket list. I've not tried Vegemite. I would like to try it. Please tell me in the comments how I should try it. Uh, I, just like a Vegemite sandwich or, or what? Please let me know. I do want to try it on video. Okay, this one's good here. It says no. It says nobody. And then it says Australian uncles say I would have been playing first grade footy if I didn't do me knee. <laughs> this one I like because now I get this. Two weeks ago, I wouldn't have understood this, but now I know what footy is referring to, so that's awesome. <laughs> New Zealand is to Australia as Canada is to the U.S. That seems accurate, for sure. Australia and New Zealand, totally partners right next to each other, totally get along. That's how Canada is to the U.S. I've been to Canada. Yeah, Canada feels pretty much like the U.S. Uh, it, it was very cool there. I was totally welcome. Obviously, it is not that much different, but it does have its own flair, and they do things a little differently, but yeah, they're very similar, very friendly, of course. But uh, that's going to be it, guys. Tell me what you thought about that down below, and keep giving me your suggestions. I'm getting flooded with awesome knowledge, uh, video ideas, and requests, so thank you for that. Keep them going. Now, I wanted to get this out of the way, the JR Free Now Australia, so I get a little bit of basic, just all-in-one uh, overview of the country, and I liked it. It's a fascinating country. I'm glad to be connecting with you guys across the world and especially in Australia. And believe me, there's a lot of awesome videos coming up from around the world, including tons of Australia ones right now. The Australia videos are hot and I'm going to keep them coming. I love doing them. They're a blast. So with that being said, guys, if you want to help me out, throw a thumbs up on this video. I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe for more things like this. And of course, my name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. Thank you again. We'll catch you later.